Welcome to the unit Introduction to Textiles, Arts and Crafts. This unit introduces you to the world of textile arts and crafts and traces its history through fascinating materials. This unit comprises of three modules and a final review section that invites you to reflect on what you have learned. By the end of this unit, students will be able to describe the development of textile arts and crafts, identify the classification of textile arts and crafts, list the techniques of textile arts and crafts, examine examples of textile arts and crafts. The first module gives an overview of textile arts and crafts. Textiles have been a fundamental part of human life since the beginning of the civilization. The methods and materials used to make them have expanded enormously while the functions of textiles have remained the same. From early times, textiles have been used to cover the human body, protect it from the elements and send social cues to other people to store, secure and protect possessions and to soften, insulate, decorate living spaces and surfaces. The textile term is derived from the Latin word texe that means to weave. It originally refers only to woven fabrics. It has however come to include fabrics produced by other methods. Thus, threads, cords, ropes, braids, lace, embroidery, nets, fabrics made by weaving, knitting, bonding, felting or tufting are textiles. Most of the textile arts begin with twisting or spinning and plying fibers to make a yarn. It is called thread when it is very fine and rope when it is very heavy. The yarn then knotted, looped, braided, laced or woven to make flexible fabric or cloth which can be used to make clothing and soft furnishings. All of these items, felt, yarn, fabric, and finished objects are collectively referred to as textiles. The textile arts also include techniques which are used for embellishing or decorating textiles such as dyeing and printing to add color and pattern, embroidery and various types of needlework. Construction methods such as sewing, knitting, crochet, and tailoring as well as the tools employed like looms and sewing needles, techniques employed like quilting and pleating and the objects made like carpets, hook drugs and coverlets all fall under the category of textile arts. One can then define craft as an activity involving skill in making things by hand, whereas art is defined as the expression or application of human creative skills and imagination, typically in a visual form such as a painting or a sculpture, producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. This definition of craft and fine art is applied to textiles as well. The textile arts and crafts use plant, animal or synthetic fibers to construct practical or decorative objects using creative hand skills. The earliest form of textiles were nets produced from one thread and employed in a single repeated movement to form loops and basketry the interlacing of flexible reeds, cane or other suitable materials. The production of net 
also called limited thread work was practiced in many ancient cultures. Examples of prehistoric textiles are extremely rare because of the perishable nature of fabrics. The earliest evidence of weaving closely related to basketry dates from Neolithic cultures of about 5000 BCE. Weaving preceded spinning of yarn, woven fabrics probably originated from basket weaving. Cotton, silk, wool and flax fibers were used as textile materials in ancient Egypt. Cotton was used in India by 3000 BCE and silk production is mentioned in Chinese chronicles dating to about the same period. The discovery of cloth fragments, terracotta spindles and bronze needles at Mohenjo-daro dating between 2500 and 1500 BCE indicates the antiquity of weaving, dyeing and patterning on fabrics in the Indian subcontinent. The earliest fabrics excavated display striking beauty and sophistication in terms of their design and art forms in a wide range of patterns and colors from different parts of the world and bear distinct local features. Yarns and cloth were dyed and printed from very early times. Specimens of dyed fabrics have been found in Roman ruins of the 2nd century BCE. Tie and dye effects decorated on the silks of China from the Tang dynasty and there is ample evidence of production of woven and printed textiles in India dating the 4th century BCE. Textiles found in Egypt also indicate a highly developed weaving craft from the 4th century with many tapestries made from linen and wool. Between the 5th and 7th century, Indian textiles had achieved a degree of refinement as seen in numerous Ajanta frescoes that features the resist techniques of printing, tie-dye, ikat and brocade weaving. By the early Middle Ages, some Turkish tribes were skilled in the manufacture of carpets, felted cloths, towels and rugs. Lyons in France had a thriving silk weaving industry by the 8th century. Many areas in UK and France between the 12th and 14th century specialized in textiles woven with wool. Indian textiles of the medieval era reflect Turkish, Afghan and Persian influence brought by the various conquerors that came and settled in the region during that time. The organization of crafts as a commercial activity under karkhanas or factories was established during the Delhi Sultanate period. Many textile fragments discovered at al fustat in Egypt dating to 13th and 15th century are of Indian origin. They consist of block printed and resist painted textiles. In Mughal India, Indian textiles, arts and crafts reached their commercial and aesthetic zenith. During the 16th and 18th century, textiles, arts and crafts such as the Kashmir shawl, fine muslins, brocades, zaris and painted and printed calicos referred to as chins in the English language were patronized by the Mughal royals. In Europe, however, the textile industry although highly developed as a craft, remained essentially a cottage industry 
until the 18th century. The Industrial Revolution brought a revolution in textile technology. The cotton gin, the spinning jenny, flying shuttle and the power loom are part of mechanized production. The Industrial Revolution at its height between 1760 and 1815 greatly accelerated the growth of mill system in textile production. The first power loom was developed in the first part of the 20th century which firmly established the factory system first in England and later in Europe and the United States. The Industrial Revolution brought uniformity to production as everything was being mass produced and arts and crafts seem to have taken a back seat. In response, a regeneration of interest in arts and crafts was initiated. This was called the arts and crafts movement, an aesthetic movement of the second half of the 19th century which represented the beginning of a new appreciation of the decorative arts throughout the Europe. A prominent figure of this movement was an English designer William Morris who in 1861 founded a firm of interior decorators and manufacturers Morris, Marshall and Faulkner and Company renamed as Morris and Company in 1875 and this firm dedicated itself to recapture the spirit and quality of medieval craftsmanship. To this date, many of the company's designs provide a source of inspiration for textile designers and furniture manufacturers worldwide. The end of 19th century proved to be detrimental for Indian crafts as the Indian subcontinent became a dumping ground for machine-made goods from England under the colonial rule. Indian craftsmen found it difficult to compete with cheap imports from Europe and eventually this led to the establishment of factories in India. Now that we have seen how textile arts and crafts developed across the world, let us move on to look at the different techniques of textile arts and crafts. The classification of textile arts and crafts can be defined by the following two broad categories encompassing handcrafted techniques such as fabric production methods, fabric ornamentation methods and additional methods. The term fabrics are used here to comprise of all the products of textile techniques that consist of the basic elements such as threads or group of threads which have been interworked by manual or mechanical means to obtain the necessary coherence. The fabric production methods comprises of various techniques of textile arts and crafts that are employed for creating the basic fabric structure. These techniques can be applied as different forms of interworking and interlacing during production. These techniques can be further distinguished as primary methods and advanced methods. The primary methods such as knitting, crochet, lace making and knotting employ none or very simple implements. Advanced methods such as weaving require complex tools and equipments. This table lists the various methods of producing fabrics. They are linking, looping, knotting, tatting, needlepoint laces, crocheting, knitting, 
plaiting, braiding, warp and weft twining, sprang, tapestry and weaving. The fabric ornamentation methods are further classified as ornamentation by additional elements during fabric production and ornamentation implemented post fabric production. The first group consists of the embellishments done while making the fabric but do not form the basic structure of the fabric. Often it becomes difficult to classify specific techniques into this group as the basic fabric forming technique becomes more and more complex as the distinction between fabric production technique and the ornamentation technique becomes obscure. The additional methods and materials used for ornamentation could be soft, pliable or stiff. The second group of ornamentation implemented post fabric production consists of techniques that use solid materials such as beads, metal threads etc. and application methods such as applique, quilting and embroidery or with liquid materials such as dyes, pigments and colors as well as methods such as printing, dyeing and painting. The fabrics are ornamented during the production of fabric or after the production of fabric. During fabric production, the ornamentation methods are pile formation or tufted fabric, beadwork and borders and fringes. Ornamentation methods post fabric productions are applique and reverse applique, quilting, embroidery, printing, dyeing and resist dyeing. Methods include the special textile production techniques. These include the resist dyeing ornamentation of yarns or threads before weaving such as ikat and techniques of joining of fabric through various means to form a new continuous textiles such as patchwork. Let us now go on to view examples of textile crafts in this module. The popular methods of fabric productions are linking, looping, knotting, tacting, needle point laces, crocheting, knitting, plating, braiding, warp and weft twining, sprang, tapestry, weaving and felting. These are bags from Mexico made with the linking technique. This is a billum bag from Papua New Guinea made by the looping technique. Another example of the looping technique from Papua New Guinea used to make a billum bag. This is a knotted fringe from Mexico. This page boy suit from Great Britain shows a boy's jacket satin lined with brushed cotton and satin and trimmed with tatting. The boy's breeches are satin and brushed cotton. This pair of booties for a baby in England was made in the early 19th century on silk decorated with silk tatting. Here is Brussels lace, Duchess, 19th century. This needle lace borders are from the Erksberg mountains of Germany. They are displayed in the Victoria and Albert Museum. This is a Bohemian crochet white lace dress made by Crux and Crow. 
It features a flapper 20 style dropped waist dress and is 100% cotton. These artistic jewellery pieces are unique creation made by jewellery designer Moryov Tov using the crochet technique. This brilliantly colored interactive crocheted playground was made by Japanese artist Toshido Horiyuchi McAdam. This knitted sculpture called the heart is by Ben Kuvas. Here is a fine example of a knitted armchair slip cover. This eight lobed double braids embroidery is made of floss cotton, grey linen and metallic thread. A weft twining technique used in a shoe made in Nepal. This band made in western Turkey uses a warp twining technique. This is an example of the sprang technique. An Egyptian bag using the sprang technique. Here are examples of tapestry. Tablet weaving. This dragger belt was made in Yemen. This band displays the weaving techniques. Another example of weaving. Felt vessels made by felting students. Seamlessly created hand felted garment using 100% merino wool, hand dyed silks, new and repurposed silks. Fabric ornamentation is done during fabric production and post fabric production. Ornamentation during fabric production includes pile formation or tuft fabric, beadwork and borders and fringes. Ornamentation done post fabric production includes applique and reverse applique, quilting, embroidery, printing, dyeing and resist dyeing. Let us now look at ornamentation done during fabric production. This traditional carpet or rug design is being prepared on a carpet loom. This is an antique Usak carpet made from the late 19th century. Chakla probably work of the Kathi Rajput warriors and a beadwork fan. Details of a headdress with embroidery and decorative tassels from Guatemala. Now let us look at post fabric production techniques. This is an example of reverse applique technique applied on a mola blouse worn by a Kuna woman in the Panama. Observe the details of the mola cloth from Guatemala made in reverse applique. A tree of life motif on a quilt from Saurashtra, Gujarat. This Harijan quilt is a combination of applique work, embroidery and quilting. An embroidered huipil, the traditional Mayan blouse worn in Mexico. This is a Banjara woman's embroidered headpiece from Gulbarga or Bijapur district in Karnataka. This is a Banjara woman's embroidered blouse from Kachli, Madhya Pradesh or Maharashtra, India. These are block printed skirts from Balotra, Rajasthan, India. Matani Pacheri hand printed and block painted hanging for worship of mother goddess by Vagri community Ahmedabad, Gujarat. Here is a soft ombre fading dress taking inspiration from Indian Bandhani and Ikat, Blue Marine revisited this trend for the spring summer 2010 collection. Resist dyed fabrics in indigo from Benin, Africa. Men and women attending the Vaudun festival 
in Grand Popo, West Africa, wearing fine batik or wax printed pagnes and bubos onto additional methods of textile production. The process of making ikat from various parts of India. This patchwork, rally quilt, is from Indian subcontinent. To summarize, in this unit, you have followed the development of textile arts and crafts since the beginning of civilization and understood how the methods and materials used to make textiles have expanded enormously. You have learned about how textiles, arts and crafts are classified, reviewed various techniques and viewed examples of textile craft. Thank you.